finding the domain of a function is going to be another important skill throughout this course. Basically, it's the set of values which satisfy the expression or the function, meaning the values of x that work in the equation. To start with, if we don't know anything else, we just assume that the domain is all real numbers. And then we look for several things in the function or expression that will help us de determine if there's any exceptions to the rules. So to find the domain, we start with the d this default domain of all real numbers, and then take away values which create a zero in the denominator. We're never allowed to divide by zero. We take away z values which we create a negative inside an even indice radical, such as a square root, or values that create a negative or zero inside a logarithm. Now let's take a look at a few different examples. In this first case, we have x minus 3 in the denominator. And we need to ensure that x minus 3 is not equal to 0. Therefore, x cannot equal 3. Now, when we write the domain, we don't want to state what values won't work. We want to know what values do satisfy the equation, or function in this case. So we're going to write the domain to be all numbers from negative infinity up to, but not including, 3 join together with all the values that are greater than 3. Always writing this in interval notation. In this second case, x minus 3 is inside of a square root. And we're not allowed to have the square root of a negative. Therefore, x minus 3 must be greater than or equal to 0. The insides, the radicand of this radical, may be 0 and may be positive, but it may not be negative. Therefore, x must be greater than or equal to 3. And in interval notation, we would write this as the interval from 3 to infinity, where we include the 3 at the left endpoint. In this third example, the argument of the logarithm must be positive. So x minus 3 must be greater than 0. Therefore, x is greater than 3. And the domain would be listed as the interval from 3 to infinity, where we do not include the 3 at the initial left-hand endpoint. Now let's look at these three inequalities I've dealt with right off the bat here. When we had x minus 3 in the denominator, we needed to ensure that that denominator was not equal to 0. When x minus 3 was inside the radical, we needed to ensure that the radicand was greater than or equal to 0. And when x minus 3 was inside of the logarithm, we needed to make sure that x was strictly greater than 0. You do not want to get these three inequalities confused with each other. In this final example of this video, let's look at this denominator. It factors into x minus 3 times x plus 2. And we know that that is not allowed to equal 0. Therefore, x cannot be equal to 3 or negative 2. If we were to graph this on a number line, we would have all values except negative 2 and 3 shaded on this number line, off to the left, between the values, and off to the right. So in interval notation, we would write this domain as negative infinity up to negative 2, united with the interval between negative 2 and 3, and then united again with the interval to the right of positive 3.